So, we are still going to talk about GDP and GNP today. I want to refresh your memory that so far in this chapter, we have talked about the definition of GDP that is gross domestic product. We went ahead and talked about the way the national income is accounted in a country and we did that by using the four sector circular flow model. Then we talked about the three methods of measuring GDP, which are the value added method, the income method and the expenditure method. And finally, we also talked about the exclusions and inclusions into GDP. Now, last time uh, uh, we talked about the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP. And I also worked through a numerical problem where I showed you how we could calculate the nominal and the real GDP. But uh, today I want to kind of talk to you still about real GDP. But uh, let's say real GDP is real GDP for 2018 as we know is the quantity of 2018 times the price of the base year and any year could be chosen as the base year any year in the past for example i could look at real gdp for 2018 using 2010 as the base year or another way of looking at it is basically looking at the real gdp of 2018 at 2010 prices so that way we are kind of adjusting for the changes in prices over time now if you have the real gdp of two years say the real GDP of 2015 and still the base year is 2010, then basically this is quantity of 2015 times the price of 2010, same here since the base year is 2010. So, if you compare between these two numbers, we can safely say that, okay, you know, whatever changes may have taken place in the economy, whatever difference we see in the real GDPs is owing to the difference in the production of goods and services in the country and it is not triggered by the change in prices because we have insulated the economy against the change in prices by pegging it to the price of one particular reference year and that reference year is the base year. Now, it may so happen that the real GDP here and the real GDP here are the same. For example, let's say this was $100. You know the actual number is much bigger than the, that. It's in trillions of dollars. But let's just assume that numerically these numbers are the same. Now, does it really mean that nothing has changed in the economy? Does it really mean that whatever was happening in 2015 in terms of production of goods and services, we have the exact same production of goods and services in 2018? Well, very simplistically, you could say so. You could say that yes, nothing has changed. It means that the prices were the same because you have used the same base year prices. And if you get the same number, then it means that the quantities must have been the same over the two years. But we also need to account for some other factors that may have changed in the economy besides the production ability and the prices. And that other factor is population. So in 2015, the population of the country may have been, let's say, 50 people. And in 2018, the population of the country, let's say, changed to 200 people. So that does make a difference economically because here it means that in 2015, 50 people were responsible for producing an aggregate output of goods and services worth $100. Whereas in 2018, it was 200 people responsible for producing the same output of final goods and services um, uh, in, in that year. So if you talk about productive capacity, then we can say that in 2015, every individual had probably had higher productive capacity than 2018 because 50 people were churning $100 there, 200 people are together churning $100. Now, that means population is an important factor that needs to be included in an indicator of macroeconomic health. 
Once again, I want to remind you that we are talking about GDP, be it nominal or real, we are talking about the GDP numbers because we want to find an indicator of the overall macroeconomic status or macroeconomic health. So once we want to determine this macroeconomic health, it is not at all, it is not just important to know about real GDP numbers, but it is also important to know that how that real GDP has been produced or what has been the role of the population in the real GDP. Now this is something similar to for example, you know, if you go to a doctor's office and the doctor checks you and diagnoses that you have a heart ailment, you have a heart problem. So it is not just enough for the doctor to know that you have a heart problem, but he will probably dig in deeper and see whether you have high blood pressure or do you have high cholesterol. So what is factor that has actually led to the heart problem? He will usually go deeper into that. So that is what exactly we are doing, right? So we are looking at nominal GDP first, then we said, okay, nominal GDP is not good enough because you know prices may have changed over the years. So let's find something that will take care of the changes in prices. So we came to real GDP. Now we are looking at real GDP and saying that, okay, fine, you know, real GDP does not really tell me how many people have been involved in the productive process. So there we need to factor in for population and that takes us to the next measure, which is real GDP per capita. Per capita stands for per person. So this is not an aggregate measure, but it really talks about what is the real GDP of a country per person, per individual. So the real GDP of 2018 or any given year is basically the real GDP of that year, 2018, divided by the population of that same given year, 2018. Okay, and you would calculate the real GDP of 2018 using that same formula. So it would be the quantity of 2018 times the price of the base year. If the price year is 2010, then we are using 2010 prices and in the denominator you still have the population of 2018, right? So basically your real GDP per capita takes you one notch deeper into looking or into assessing the macroeconomic health because it is accounting for something as important as the population of a country. Because over time the population is changing and the participation of people in the productive process may also differ by years. So now you have another measure that is real GDP per capita. So just reminding you before we move on to something else, reminding you that you must know the formulae for nominal GDP, you must know the formula for real GDP, real GDP per capita, the GDP deflator and the rate of change of real GDP or growth rate of real GDP. And we talked about those in detail last time, so I am not going into the details once again. But please remember that for your quiz and your exam purpose, that is something that you must remember. So we talked about GDP and when we defined GDP, we said that GDP was the total volume, the total value of all final goods and services produced in a country within the geographic boundaries of the country during a given accounting period where the accounting period is usually one year. So please note that we are really stressing on within the geographic boundaries of the country. That is important. So any production of goods and services within the geographic boundaries goes into GDP. But there may be so many people who are traveling abroad. There might be so many Americans going abroad and they are involved in productive activities. They might be, you know, earning an income elsewhere. And that would be true for any country. For example, I come from India. I'm still a citizen of India, but I work in United States and I pay taxes to the United States government. So where does my activity gets reported? Obviously, it gets reported in the US GDP because my productive activity is being done on US soil. It is within the geographic boundaries of United States. But then how does India benefit or how does India account for my productive services? Because I'm still an Indian citizen, so I'm an Indian factor of production. I'm a part, I'm still a part of human resource 
of India. So where does that get accounted for in the Indian economy? Well, it gets accounted for in the GNP, which is the gross national product. Gross national product. So gross national product or GNP, the definition of GNP is, it is the total value of all final goods and services produced by domestic factors of production by which we mean uh, citizens and domestic companies during an accounting period, which is once again usually a year. Okay. So please note that there is a basic difference in the definition of GDP and GNP. In GDP, we are talking about the production within the domestic country, within the geographic boundaries of the domestic country. So there the geographic boundaries were important. Here we are saying the domestically owned factors of production, that means the citizens and the domestic companies, but we are not saying anything about their geographic location. Right? So for example, a citizen of United States could get his graduate degree here and let's say he finds a job and he moves to Germany and he is working in Germany. So he's earning a salary in Germany and he's paying taxes in Germany. So where does his, get, his income get reported? Obviously it will get reported in the German GDP because he is working on German soil within the geographic boundaries of Germany, but it also gets reported in the US GNP because he is still a US factor of production. He is a factor of production that is owned by USA, right? So he is a part of US manpower, so it will get reported in the US GNP. That means the GNP is a little broader definition, it is broader in the sense of geographic location. So the geographic location does not matter in the definition of GNP. What really matters is who is owning the factor of production. And the same would be true also for business firms. For example, Coca-Cola, right? It's a big multinational company, but it is headquartered in US. The parent nation is United States. That is where the company originated. However, it has production units set up almost all over the world in Asia, Africa, South America, everywhere, right? So if Coca-Cola is producing its products and selling its products in India, then all the proceeds from its sales gets accounted in Indian GDP, the Indian GDP, because it is within Indian soil. However, it does get accounted in US GNP because Coca-Cola is still a US owned factor of production. It is a company that is owned by USA. It is It originated in USA, let's say. So it's a US factor of production. So all the revenues and the profits of Coca-Cola all over the world will still get accounted in US GNP, okay? However, you know, you can understand from the two definitions that there must be, there is some kind of an overlap between these two indicators, the GDP and GNP. So really the connection between GNP and GDP is the GNP is equal to the GDP. And once again, this is something for you to memorize. So you need to remember this. The GNP is equal to GDP plus net factor income, sometimes also called net factor earnings, from abroad, 
So, what does this net factor earnings or net factor income stand for? This is basically we are looking at the income of domestic citizens abroad. So, whatever the US citizens and the US companies are earning abroad minus the income of foreigners in the home country. Right? So, that means whatever the citizens of other countries working in USA are earning here or whatever the companies owned by other countries are earning by selling their goods and services or producing their goods and services in United States. So, it is the income of the domestic citizens or companies abroad minus the income of foreigners or, uh, or companies in the home country. Now, please note that here I keep talking in the context of USA because we are in USA. So, for us the home country is USA. But this would be true for any country. If I was calculating the GNP of India or the GNP of Japan, I would still have the same equation. So, GNP of Japan would be the GDP of Japan plus the income of the Japanese citizens abroad minus the income of all foreigners in Japan. Right? So, the home country could be different depending on the context. So, what is true for United States would also be true for any other uh, country. Now, before we kind of wrap up, please understand that when we talk about income of domestic citizens abroad, we are really talking about receipts of money. Because our factor of production, US factor of production is earning that money. So, it is really a receipt. And the income of foreigners in the home country, that means income of foreigners in United States is actually a payment that is going out. So, here you have a concept of inflow and here you have a concept of outflow. So, you may also look at it from that aspect. You could say that GNP is actually GDP plus the inflow of assets into the home country minus the outflow of assets from the home country. So, you could also look at it in that way depending on the situation. However, it would be important for you to remember this formula and it would also be important for you to kind of understand the difference. So, uh, when we go on to the problem solving video, we will talk about some simple cases, some simple situations and you will be asked whether you know this is included in GDP or it is included in GD GNP. So, depending on the situation, you would have to take your pick whether this is going into GDP or GNP. But we will talk more about those specific cases in the problem solving video. So, that is all I have for you in this uh, chapter. Hopefully, you have understood why we were talking about this in the first place. We were talking about these indicators in the first place because we want to assess the macroeconomic condition of a country. And we want to assess the macroeconomic condition of a country because we said that macro always influences the micro. Anything that's happening at the macro level has an effect on the decision making at the micro level. Okay, thank you.